Hey guys, and welcome to the show. Today we have Art Hogarth with us. He's an awesome Windows engineer. Uh, I've worked with him on several products, and uh, today he is going to tell us the differences between Windows Server 2016 and Windows Server 2019. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome to the show. I am so excited today to have uh, Art Hogarth with me. And Art and I have worked together before on some NASA stuff. And uh, he's awesome as a person and awesome as a technical reference. And so I have a feeling this is going to be a lot of fun. How's it going, Art? Good. How are you? Happy Friday. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, happy Friday. Um, you know, I travel most of the week because, you know, you've been out to Marshall and some of the other places mm -hmm. that I go in, in frequent. And so uh, Friday is usually my non-travel day. And uh, so, um, yeah, happy Friday. I'm working from home uh, most Fridays and today is no exception. Nice. Yeah. So, um, man, uh, we're about uh, I think we just released server 2019, correct? It, it's been released. Yes, it, it has definitely been released. It came out uh, a little bit or late last year. I know that there was a pause in it, too, um, uh, during the initial release. But it is now out and available to, to download and install and, and work with. OK, awesome. And so uh, what I the reason that I invited you to do the show was because I thought it would be interesting to talk about some of the some of the new things that 2019 adds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, 2019 is definitely a leap forward for us for server. Um, we did a lot of investment uh, in, in really four main areas, uh, and those surround uh, hybrid security uh, application platforms and hyper-converged infrastructure. Uh, we have uh, put a lot of time and effort into these areas over the course of time. So some of these are improvements to features from like 2016, uh, as well as some new features that we've introduced uh, going into 2019 as well. OK, awesome. Well, I'm going to sit back and just let you go because because you know that product a lot better than I do. And if I have any questions, I'll jump in and just ask them. Sure, sure. So uh, these slides are coming out of one of our workshops that talks about 2019 and all of the new features and upgrades in it. And ideally, after you know the workshop, you're going to be able to talk about what those new features are. We're going to talk about lifecycle because uh, obviously, you know, that's a that's a big key importance with the uh, server these days. Uh, we're going to talk about what we mean by hybrid. Uh, that's certainly a, a topic of uh, discussion for a lot of folks. We're going to talk about security improvements. We're also going to talk about application platforms. So that's really all around containers and Kubernetes and Docker and things like that. Um, then we're also going to talk a little bit about hyperconverged infrastructure on that. So as I said earlier, you know, we're really focusing here on the hybrid security at plat and the hyper converged. Uh, those are the four key pillars that uh, they have really put a lot of investment and a lot of time into for server 2019 or 2019. Yeah. Cool. Um, blowing through a couple of these just because uh, there may not be as important. But one thing to keep in mind is we do have two servicing channels. Um, those who've been around for a while are familiar with this. We have the long-term servicing channel. This is pretty much your enterprise version where we release a new version every two to three years, five, five years of mainstream support, five uh, years of extended support um, available through all of your normal channels. And then we also have the semi-annual one. This is what we're releasing every six months. Um, this is really focused more around containers and things like that. You're getting the latest and greatest, not only security updates, but you're getting all the new feature sets too. And eventually the idea is, is that some of these new features in the semi-annual will roll up into the long-term servicing channel. So as you can kind of see, we do various innovations uh, every six months, and then these do tie into some of those other releases on the long-term servicing channel. So uh, when we were talking about the different release channels, uh, this slide kind of combines everything and things to keep in mind. Long-term servicing, you know, those are your traditional file server, ro uh, file server roles, exchange, things like that, versus the semi-annual, uh, more containers, more modern apps, uh, things like that. Different support uh, mechanisms, you know, five years of mainstream, five years extended versus 18 months of support on the semi-annual channel. Um, all versions of Windows Server are available in the long term. We only have the standard and data center available 
available in a semi-annual. And as you can see there, just on that chart, uh, things to keep in mind uh, when deciding which uh, branch or which uh, channel you want to follow for your organization. So uh, earlier I talked about Server 2019 and, and us in, uh, investing in four key pillars. So we kind of wanted to talk about those a little bit. Uh, hybrid cloud is one of them. Uh, we wanted to make sure that Server 2019, you know, is easy to connect into whatever you are currently using, whether it's Azure Stack, whether it's Azure. Um, so we've really designed it to integrate easy into your systems. Uh, Windows Admin Center is one of those, those features in there that allows you to connect to both your on-prem and servers in the cloud for management. Um, so definitely on that hybrid track there, as well as integrate things with like Azure Recovery Services and things like that as well. We wanted to make that easy to, to integrate across all of your different platforms. Forms. Security, uh, we've made some security improvements as well. Um, ATP is now embedded in Windows Server 2019, um, which is uh, great if you've uh, talked to some of the folks there about Windows Defender and all of that, that product suite. It's great that it's built in now um, and definitely provides some better security in 2019. Uh, application platform. So here we're really looking around Docker. So we're looking at using the core image of 2019 uh, to support Docker's. And then we've also got uh, uh, Kubernetes and things like that to go ahead and manage your, your containers um, really for those modern apps and, and things like that that you want to develop and want to really be on that bleeding edge. Provide, provides a lot of scalability, uh, easy to ramp up and, and scale out applications, especially web services and things like that. And also, uh, we've made some improvements to the hyperconverged infrastructure platform. Um, things, uh, you know, storage spaces direct is in there, uh, networking as well as uh, other general forms of storage. Uh, the hyperconverged is definitely kind of where we're going with this. You can run this all um, on your on your server 2019 infrastructure and environment, um, and can certainly help you modernize and in improve your infrastructure overall. So uh, when we're talking about those four pillars, the first one uh, again was hybrid. So over the last few years, you can see that we've made a lot of improvements. Uh, we started back before 2016 with Azure Active Directory and AD Connect. Um, well, actually it used to be called a bunch of different things, but we've settled now on Azure AD Connect. Uh, we had Azure Site Recovery as well, um, on-premise DR to Azure. I mean, if you think about you know the old ways of doing site recovery or disaster recovery, this is a this is a great advancement. Um, and again, this all started in pre-2016. As we kind of look forward and we get into 2016, um, Azure AD Domain Services, and we had Azure Security Center as well. Um, some more improvements to Azure Site Recovery. So we had encryption at rest, uh, which was a, a, a huge improvement as well. Going forward into 2017, we started looking at Azure Monitor and doing backups of Windows System State. Um, again, some more improvements in Azure Site Recovery with uh, disk support, uh, as well as that deployment planner as well. And then in 2018, we're really looking at that hybrid cloud uh, print. So you can now actually print from an Azure AD join device to your corporate printers, which I think is really kind of cool. Um, and we also have Azure File Sync as well. Um, when we start talking about the security pillar, uh, we've made a lot of uh, changes to that in protecting the OS as well. So if we again, if we start looking at 2016, uh, we did have virtualization based security, uh, things like device guard, UEFI secure boot and those DMA protections. We started uh, looking at the virtualization code integrity and having code integrity policies to help control and secure your environment as well. Cred guard was there. We also had remote credential guard, which is nice because that allows you to remote into boxes without actually uh, sending your credentials over the wire. So it actually will come back to the box for its Kerberos uh, ticket and not send it across and keeps that help helps keep that secure as well. Uh, there weren't really a whole lot of new security features uh, in 1709. Uh, when we start looking at 1803, we did make some improvements to device guard, uh, improvements with application control, as well as some more built-in code integrity improvements. And then for 2019, like I mentioned earlier, we do have ATP built into the OS. Um, also things like exploit guard and kernel, kernel control flow guard. Uh, those are all there to help protect uh, processes in the kernel and other processes from being taken over or malicious intent. Uh, some more uh, virtualization based security memory enclave. So we're running certain things in a memory enclave to protect it so it can't be leaked out or taken control or, or kind of exploited in that sense. Uh, a couple of the other things that I wanted to talk about here really quick in security were those uh, those 
enclaves, memory enclaves, that was something new specifically. Uh, Exploit Guard was also new uh, in 2019, as well as some of those integrated security services. And one of the big things that I thought was really cool is we've enhanced uh, the shielded virtual machine. So this gives you the opportunity to run a virtual machine and keep it shielded and keep it protected um, using things like Host Guardian service. And so uh, one of the other pillars that we talked about was application platforms, and this really kind of focuses around containers. So again, over the last couple of years, if we look at uh, Server 2016, uh, we had the initial launch of containers, uh, process and Hyper-V isolation, as well as uh, Docker EE basic was included at no additional cost. If we start looking at 1709, we did some optimizations uh, to container images for nano server and server core. Um, also did some uh, support there for uh, Linux containers, and we also had the Windows subsystem for Linux come out. Uh, there was also some networking enhancements for the software-defined networking as well. Mm. Uh, version 1803, again, we did some more core image optimizations, uh, some more command line tools. So curl and tar were introduced and SSH as well. Uh, there were some more enhancements to the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, again, some networking enhancements, uh, improved network security, uh, some open source plugins for Kubernetes, uh, and some more functionality uh, around Kubernetes and, and its conformance. And then in 2019, again, we've continued again with server core image optimizations. Uh, we've also improved compatibility for apps uh, running in containers. There's some group managed service account support for it as well. Some more improvements to Kubernetes um, and some container performance uh, and density improvements across the board. So we've definitely uh, put a lot of time and effort into this. Containers uh, are definitely a, a, a way of the future, especially when we're looking at server core and some of those uh, web-based uh, web applications. Cool. Yeah. And again, I did say Kubernetes. So we do we do support uh, Kubernetes for deploying, uh, or I'm sorry, not deploying, but managing your uh, containers in uh, server core. So this is pretty much the most popular thing out there right now when it comes to managing them. So we, we do support this as well as Docker Swarm for managing uh, your various types of containers and things like that. And so that last pillar uh, in uh, it, for Server 2019 that we've kind of focused uh, improvements around was the hyperconverged infrastructure. So this includes things like failover clustering, uh, software-defined storage, the Hyper-V role itself, and Hyper-V Hyper failover clustering, along with core networking as well as the software-defined networking. So over the last two years, failover clustering is, is going through a few changes. In 2016, uh, we did have cluster rolling upgrades. That was something new. We had a cloud witness, uh, which was nice as well, site aware failover. And if you look through the, the chart there on the left, you can see that the rest of those uh, are new and improvements that we made starting in 2016 to failover clusters. If we look at 2019 now, um, we do have AD domain migration support that's been improved. File share witness was improved. The one I find really kind of interesting is that USB file witness. So you can now use a USB drive to be a witness for your clusters. Um, some environments, obviously, that can be a challenge. They don't allow USB sticks, but for those environments that do, that's an easy way to, to kind of add a witness for your clustering. Um, NTLM authentication was removed, and we do have Azure Aware clusters as something new as well in failover clustering. So, server 2019 doesn't support any version of NTLM at this point? NTLM uh, authentication? Server 2019 does, but this was, uh, I believe that, that they're referring to specifically uh, failover clustering here. Uh, oh, okay. All, all, right. all, all strictly um, uh, Kerberos. Okay, cool. Good to know. That's, that's important. Yes, absolutely. Um, next up were some enhancements in storage. So we've improved data deduplication. Um, that's been around for quite a while, but we're getting better and better at it. So why have all of that extra space taken up if we can dedupe your data? Um, SMB is uh, now more secured. Uh, we do have that virtual persistent memory. That is something new. Uh, file server resource manager was improved. And again, I, you know, I just don't want to read these to you, but if you look down there, there's been a lot of improvements to storage, um, it, it, some improvements and basically new features as well. Yeah. Cool. And then also uh, part of that hyper-converged infrastructure, we've made uh, improvements over to Hyper-V over the last few years. So in 2016, um, obviously we scalability was improved. Linux integration was there. Um, you could hot, hot add and remove NICs, which I thought was actually really kind of cool. Uh, nested virtualization was new at that point um, and PowerShell Direct was in there. Lots of different things in 2016 uh, in terms of Hyper-V. 
And even as we kept going with Hyper-V in 2016, we kept introducing new things and kept slowly improving various services and, and things of that nature. And now when we get into 2019, we're looking at RDMA guest support, uh, the virtual s switch receive segment collacing, which is kind of cool. Um, and you got that dynamic virtual machine uh, multi-queue. Uh, also in Windows 10 for the Hyper-V client, there were some improvements to that. Uh, the default switch is new, for instance. There were some automatic check checkpoints introduced, uh, battery pass-through as well. Um, so you can see there uh, that there were some improvements made to the Hyper-V for Windows 10 as well. Uh, another area that we did make some improvements were around core networking. So we definitely improved our Windows time. So if you've been in the industry for years, uh, we've always had a little time skew maybe with server, but they went through in 2019 and made some huge improvements to how we actually do timing in it. I can't remember the exact figure, but it's accurate so much more than what it used to be. Um, so this was a huge improvement and a, and a big thing for us here, at least in 2019. Uh, you can also see that Leadbat was improved and there were some other new networking uh, data plan features as well as there. Cool. Um, one last area here to uh, talk about is that software-defined networking. So over the last couple of years, uh, we did improve uh, Hyper-V uh, network virtualization, um, some enhanced support for uh, VXLAN encapsulation tasks, uh, there was some, uh, the Hyper-V virtual switch was introduced, uh, embedded teaming was part of that, packet direct, uh, lots of different things that were added to that software load balancing uh, as well. Uh, we had some virtual network encryption when we looked at 1709 and 1803. And then in 2019, we're looking at virtual networking peering. Uh, we're doing encrypted subnets, uh, IPv6 support for single and dual stack. So there's been a lot of improvements in 2019 since 2016. Hey, Art, thank you so much for running us through that. That was awesome. No problem. I might have some questions later on, so we might have you back if you're willing. Oh, absolutely. It'd be fun. Uh, we can focus more on a specific topic or a specific pillar or some of those new technologies, and we can dive deeper into it. Yeah, that's awesome. But I think this was a great overview. And if you're out there watching, one of the things that I want to stress is that what he went through is actually part of a workshop that we offer in Premier Services. So if you are a Premier customer and you're interested in learning about 2019, that workshop's a great way to go. I think it's four days and we did the overview in what, 30, 40 minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> there, every, every single thing you saw, every bullet point you saw on those slides is something that we will absolutely deep dive into and, and um, get you up to speed on. Uh, so if you're interested in, in doing that, uh, workshop, contact your technical account manager, and he can help you get that lined up. Um, Art, again, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, I really no do appreciate it. And uh, um, like I said, man, I'd love to have you back to do some other stuff. Absolutely, uh, anytime. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to throw some links up. Uh, if you could do me a favor and shoot the data sheet over to Eric so that he has it, and he can throw that up in the... Uh, in the notes, uh, we can we can let people that watch the video um, take a look at the data sheet as well. Yeah, absolutely. Sure thing. Keep in mind, yeah, it is a four day workshop. Uh, we do have labs around it, too. So I think there's five or six different labs throughout those four days that you get to participate in and and really do a, a bunch of the stuff that we talk about. You get some hands on experience with it. Yeah, and to me, that's the most valuable part. Sitting there and listening to somebody talk to a slide is is certainly important because it gives you kind of the basic idea. Right. But um actually pulling up a vm and and walking through labs that take you through some of these features is is essentially priceless that experience is great yeah and they're well done they're pretty good labs uh we had a lot of fun doing them um they and they definitely go along with the with the class so you're definitely going to reinforce what we were talking about during lecture you're going to get to do hands-on in those labs absolutely all right guys listen thank you so much for watching um we certainly appreciate all of you, and uh, that's your taste of Premiere. Thanks, everybody.